While 2019 has been an awesome year for new indie games, as we get close to moving into a new decade, there's plenty of indies on the horizon to get excited about. Welcome to Get Indie Gaming and in the first of a new series, today we're taking a look at 10 indie games expected out in 2020 we think you'll want to keep an eye on. And at number 10, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout is a very rare thing for us indeed. Here we have a battle royale type of game we're happily getting excited about. Featuring what look to be brutal minigames inspired by those zany game shows we see on late night and sometimes primetime TV, up to 100 players will fight it out until ultimately there's only one person left to claim the prize. This looks a fine amount of good old fashioned stupid fun, all with the physics based obstacles and traps aplenty. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout is coming out to home PC and PlayStation 4 at some point next year and we can't wait to tuck into this cheery looking fun size bag of slapstick silliness. Next up at number 9, Blood Roots is a classic tale centred around a man and his quest and desire for revenge having been battered close to death and left to die out in the Old West. I had hands on time with Blood Roots earlier in the year at Gamescom, and while denying it it is ultra violent, there's somewhat of a poetic and ballet like nuance to the slicing and dicing you see on your screens. One of the superb parts of Blood Roots comes from everything in the game well it can be pretty much used by you as a weapon. The skill and points payoff here comes from chaining together different attacks with any number of different items from bottles to swords to beer barrels. You name it, if it moves in the game you can probably use it to batter and splatter your enemies. Now hand on heart, I wasn't particularly good at this when I sat down to play it in the summer just gone and I certainly won't be winning any places on the leaderboards for the fastest run or most kill streaks. However I will be laughing myself silly once it arrives with all its comic book violence at a time to be announced in 2020. At number 8, Across the Grooves was my top choice of all the indie games I got to play at EGX London a few weeks ago. It's as what you might expect from looking at it, a visual novel centred around a woman called Alice who one day receives a package from her former partner which contains a vinyl record. Before leaving her apartment for the day, Alice places the record on the turntable and as the needle makes its way along the record's surface, she's taken back to her past and her memory becomes flooded with significant moments. Once the record ends, she goes out about her day and she quickly finds her reality has changed. From then on, you go about piecing together the magical mystery behind the record that's able to alter the course of Alice's history. The EGX demo was a delight, particularly the handcrafted drawings and dynamic score which branches along with the story and choices you make as you follow the narrative. This is very much the kind of game I've been enjoying of late and I eagerly await to see more. At number 7, the sequel to a game that for many is THE definitive one to play in the genre, Ori and the Will of the Wisps comes to the Xbox and the Game Pass as well as onto home PC on February 11th. With an art style I'll understatedly call exquisitely pretty, Ori and the Will of the Wisps features a new autosave feature, a number of improvements and additions to the movement abilities as well as a complete overhaul of the upgrade system. If it's anything like the original, we can expect a story that plucks the heartstrings and one of the most visceral gaming experiences of the entire year. Our number 6 is perhaps instantly recognisable and has been on Get Indie Gaming a few times before. I really hope 2020 is the year it jumps out from the stables at Finji who recently brought us games such as Overland and Night in the Woods. 
Essentially the work of a single developer, Tunic is a plucky little fox that seems to know how to handle themselves rather well with a sword. You can draw on many inspirations here, although I'm always pleasantly surprised how jovial everything looks with the bright characters and cute characters. That said, I'm fairly sure these monsters and bosses our little fox will come up against won't be any old pushover. Having played it and seen others spending time with the demo, it feels surprisingly tough and solid. The combat seems deep and really rather enjoyable. Either way, I hope 2020, as I said before, is the year Tunic pops out, and I look forward to spending some time with this scrappy little fox. At number 5, and while the Steam page of Lunar Shadow Dust says it's still coming out this year, I'm assuming for right or wrong on a hunch, it slipped into 2020. There's a demo which you can play now, and I'll put a link down in the description, and if you do, you'll probably find like me, Luna is quite the pretty thing to look at. The game uses traditional frame by frame character animation. There's 12 frames per second and 3 layers per frame. Inspired by classic point and click adventures of the past 20 years, Luna tells quite the magical story of a boy and his companion, all on their journey through a cinematic like experience upwards within a mysterious tower. The lighting reminds me of a flickering candle and the accompanying soundtrack from what I've heard so far is well worth a listen within its own right. At the moment I understand Lunar Shadow Dust is headed for the home PC, although I haven't heard yet if it's likely to see a port onto any consoles. Although I suspect this could be a real unit shifter if it comes to the Switch. Up now at number 4. Ooblets like Tunic will no doubt be familiar to many viewers, not just for it being one of the most talked about indie darlings of recent years, but also after the fallout from earlier in the year and how the news of it coming to Epic as an exclusive was portrayed. Pushing all that aside, Ooblets is a farming, village simulation and creature collection game. In it you'll be able to customise your characters and have them compete dance battles with fellow Ooblet trainers, but also from wild Ooblets from across the Oob. You'll be able to grow your Ooblets from seeds, have them level up to unlock new dances and also make your rundown little farm well into something more comfortable for you and your little creatures. It seems churlish to suggest there's anything really new going on here, and yet given how cute it all looks, there's no doubt it could become the big farming and creature collection game of 2020. At number 3, expected on the home PC in August of next year, with Switch and possible ports onto mobiles at a later date, Duru is a 2D puzzle platformer that began as a spare time project for the developers while studying at HTW Berlin in October of 2017. Here we join a West African inspired mole rat colony and play as Thule in a game that's about depression, insecurities and friendship. It's a puzzle platformer where Thule goes about her business with a divisive AI character that works for and sometimes against her best interests within what I understand to be a worldless narrative where Thule shows her thoughts in pictures whereby the player can learn about her mental illness while also watching how the other mole rats react and deal with it. Duru looks highly emotive, original and aims to tell a serious tale within a friendly, light-hearted context. Up now and in the runners up position we have Carrion, something that's being called a reverse horror game where you play not as the captive or terrified monster's prey, but rather the monster itself where your job is to kill, maim and generally cause the human characters a sub-optimal day. First shown off back at E3 earlier in the year, we recently spent time with Carrion in the limited time demo which was made available for home PC via Steam. There's no denying it is one heck of a gruesome thing to look at, although the art style with the body parts, limbs and other squelchy stuff splattering around the screen is of course hardly tasteful, though I can see the appeal in its macabre. The developers have indicated John Carpenter's The Thing as a huge influence. This comes across with the buckets of gore, 
the unsettling soundtrack as you slither your way across the game, which I suspect is seeking to elicit disgust and elation in equal measure. Carrion is expected on home PC and Xbox, including the Game Pass, at some point next year. So at number one in the first of this new series of the most wanted indie games expected out in 2020, Minute of Ireland is, and I use perhaps these words too liberally, an utterly beautiful looking animated colouring book type of game. It's from the developer behind The Inner World and will deliver a narrative driven adventure as you play as a character called Mo. Mo lives in a now sadly polluted group of islands. This pollution is in the form of deadly spores, which has come about following the failure of the island's protection system, a collection of antennae installed and looked after by giants who once lived alongside the human inhabitants. In Mo, you'll head out into the wilds with your special Omni Switch tool to try and save what's left of the antennae to protect your family and the overall island's ecosystem. With challenging environmental based puzzles to solve, a seemingly wonderful cast of NPCs to meet and speak with, I understand Minute of Island was a clear winner for those who got to play the demo at the recent EGX in Berlin, and it's a game I'm scheduled to play within the next couple of weeks. Expected at some point next year, Minute of Islands will come out on the home PC and all of the major platforms. So now it's over to you. Which of these are you most keen to see more of? Let me know down in the comments. Likewise, if you have any suggestions for the titles you think we should cover in this new series. If you like what you see, please slap that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. And with that, many thanks for watching. We'll see you all again here soon for more indie game videos.